So do the best players make the best coaches? This is a question that I thought about recently after I was talking about some coaches and some guys in the comments mentioned a player who's now a coach. And the initial comments were, geez, he was a rubbish player. He was average. Why is he coach? And it kind of got me thinking, does it matter if you're a, if you're a ordinary or not even great player? When you when you're going into coaching, it's a different it's a different thing playing from coaching. So does it make a difference? Uh, so I thought I'd have a look at some of the the top players, the top players, top coaches uh, in world rugby, both kind of current ones and a few uh, past ones, and um, yeah, just compare how they were as players to how they were as coaches, and see if there's any kind of connection between being either a successful or unsuccessful player. And likewise, how that follow through follows through with uh, with coaching. It's by no means an exhaustive list. I've looked at maybe I think less than twenty uh, coaches here. So, and, and pretty much all ones that I've seen in my lifetime. So ones who who kind of go back uh, in history. Um, yeah, I haven't covered them here. And to be fair, there's a fair bit of Southern Hemisphere. Uh, bias here a lot more southern hemisphere guys than northern but um a few from a few from the north as well so just to have a a wee bit of a balanced look but um yeah guys that i miss you tell me about in the comments below because that will also kind of help add to the conversation but i'll start with some world cup winning coaches i'll start with a new zealander i'll start with graham henry because he's the guy uh, who broke the big world cup drought with the all blacks uh, following an unsuccessful campaign uh with the All Blacks in 2007, he went on and led them to, to the 2011 World Cup victory here in New Zealand. Um, so he's pretty widely regarded uh, as one of the great minds of the game. Um, most of the teams he's he's worked with have, have gone on to have some success. He's recently come back and helped Auckland as an assistant coach. And wouldn't you know, Auckland got their first Mighty 10 Cup title uh, in years with him as an assistant. So it's maybe not all down to him, but... Um, yeah, how did he go as a player? Definitely before my time. But from the information I could find, he played kind of senior club level, both rugby and cricket. So he's a pretty good sportsman, but not top, top level. I mean, senior club player, you got to be pretty good. But that's definitely, what is that, like third, probably at that time? Third tier. So by no means the same level as a player as he was as a coach because as a coach he's a top level world cup winner uh but as a as a, as a player he was i don't mean to say just a club player but you kind of get what i mean he was a club player so um sportsman but by no means the best in the business uh he coached auckland the blues wales british and irish lions uh, and new zealand and like i said pretty much all fairly successfully uh interestingly and this may become a slight theme he also worked as a geography teacher, a PE teacher, and a headmaster. So there's a few other guys who I'm going to mention who've also had careers in, in teaching. So aside from just being a good player, uh, there may be an argument for saying that there's, there's something about guys who have experience with exchanging knowledge that, that seems to, to make good coaches. Number two, I look at Jake White. Um, again, his playing career, uh, far before my time and from what I could find, cause there's very little information on his, his playing career. Uh, apparently he made the first 15 in his high school, which again is, it's pretty good. Like not everybody makes the first 15. A lot of guys try out and not everybody makes it, but by his own accounts was never a great player. Uh, but he did start coaching high school teams. He also had a teaching position. So there's that connection again. Uh, coached under 21s, coached South Africa to World Cup uh, victory in 2007, took over the Brumbies and um, led them to a Super Rugby final for the first time in a while, but kind of lifted them. So another guy who's a top coach, not really a top player, but has a background with some education. So, so far we're two from two with guys who are not, we're not great players, but pretty great coaches. Uh, number three, I'm going to go with Clive Woodward. Another World Cup winning coach. He won it with England in 2003. Uh, he did play for England. So he played top level for his country. According to this, again, before my time. But 21 caps for England. Two caps for the British and Irish Lions. 
uh, a ton of caps for, for Leicester. Um, and yeah, coached London Irish, England, and then the British and Irish Lions. So, I mean, I don't know what his reputation is like in, in England as a player. I don't know if he's regarded as as a good player, as a legend, as a, as a decent player. But I mean, I would say he's pretty highly, highly regarded as a, as a coach. I mean, he has to be. He's the guy who led them to the World Cup for the first time ever. So, uh, in terms of coaching, for mine, it seems to be at a higher level than his playing career. But again, he played for England, so that's nothing to be to be snuffed at. Um, he's a bit of a... He's a hard guy to listen to sometimes, but... Yeah. He likes his... He's opinionated as a pundit. I guess that's what he gets paid for. Um, so those are the kind of guys from, from a bit of history. Current coaches, Steve Hansen of the All Blacks. Um... Playing career, he played for Canterbury, uh, I think back in the 80s, again, before my time, might have even been earlier, I can't remember, um, but 21 caps for Canterbury, and this is before the days of Super Rugby, so it's still, it's higher than like Graham Henry's level of playing, but he's not an All Black, uh, and 21 caps is not an astonishing number of caps, um, but he was a solid player, obviously, but then his coaching career, uh, he had Canterbury, he had uh, Wales mixed bag, uh, a New Zealand as assistant in the New Zealand to World Cup in 2015. Um, assistant to Robbie Deans at the Crusaders when um, when he was winning things all the time with the Crusaders. So coaching career far outweighs his his playing career. So we're kind of four from four with Clive Woodward being the best of the players. So I'm leaning towards it doesn't matter if you're a good player or not. Coaching is a totally different business. But we'll keep looking. Joe Schmidt, arguably the best coach uh, in world rugby at the moment. Just won the, the award for coach of the year. Uh, again, he played uh, the same level as Steve Hansen. So he played for Manawatu in the, the NPC. So it's again before the days of super rugby. But it's still provincial level rugby. Um, uh, I think he played for... Oh, he coached New Zealand schools. Coached Bay of Plenty. Uh, went over to coach in Leinster and um, I think it was in France first but then Leinster and then in, um, obviously with Ireland so he's another one though that was an English teacher and a deputy principal so for mine there seems to be more of a connection between being a teacher and being a good coach than being a top player but that's only the first five so there's a great video of um, Joe Schmidt scoring a, a try for one or two. I think it was against the French Barbarians team. You could look that up on YouTube. It's it's quite. I think he's a, he's a winger, so it's uh, it's an interesting one to to kind of get a blast from the past. Uh, some guys though who were probably better as players. So let's look at Rossi Erasmus. Uh, Thirty six caps for the box. Uh, went to the World Cup in 1999. Now, I don't know what his standing was like in South Africa as a player. Again, I can get a feeling for the New Zealand players and kind of how they're regarded. 36 caps strikes me as a pretty solid career without being a star. But I don't know how he was regarded in South Africa. So, Bok fans can kind of let me know about how he was regarded as a player. But as a coach, uh, he's, he's been around in, in South Africa. Definitely got a very good reputation as a coach. Uh, his work with Munster is very highly regarded in now South Africa. So... Seems to be one that as a coach has had more success, but I mean, 36 caps for the box is again, uh, it's a fair shift. So he's probably one that's, it's a bit even, I guess if he goes on to win world cups with the box, you might put his coaching career on a higher level. Uh, but we will see. Now, the reason I'm wearing the Jaguars jersey, Mario Ledesma is my next man. He is a guy that I think without doubt can be considered like a legend player for Argentina. 84 caps for the Pumas. Very highly regarded as a player, but likewise highly regarded as a coach. He was, you know, Ford's coach for the Wallabies and was was largely credited with helping turn around uh, that Wallabies scrum and some of the work of those Fords. So, uh, yeah, very, very good kudos to him for that. And then he moved on to the Jaguars, had pretty much instant success with them, then to the Pumas. And whilst November wasn't the best, he still definitely lifted them from the team that was playing in June this year. So it's too early in his coaching career, career to say whether he's going to be like legend status. But he's definitely on a pretty good track uh, at the moment. 
Uh, Warren Gatland. He's uh, probably unlucky not to have official test caps as an all-black. Uh, he played 140 games for Waikato in the MPC, which when you compare to, like I said, Steve Hansen had like 21 for Canterbury, and uh, Joe Schmidt had a handful for Manawatu. Warren Gatland, 140 for Waikato, was a, was a solid, solid career. He had 17 non-test caps for, for the All Blacks. And I seem to remember seeing an interview with Sean Fitzpatrick, basically where he said he didn't want Warren to get any test matches as a player because he was so worried that he was going to steal his spot. So he did everything he could to kind of stand in his way. So yeah, uh, kind of a nearly man there. Very good player without being at that top, top level. Uh, and he worked as a PE teacher. So it's another guy with that education background, uh, then various coaching uh, coaching jobs, Connacht Island, um, you know, back to Waikato, Wales, the British and Irish Lions. Uh, his coaching career definitely outweighs his playing career, but he's another one that's, um, that's still put in a pretty good effort as a player. Uh, moving on, Eddie Jones. coaching career has been I think a fair bit more successful than his playing career his playing career he played for New South Wales he played for Randwick and he was a teacher are you getting there's, there's a bit of a theme um, yeah he led the Brumbies to their first title in 2001 was assistant with the box when they won the World Cup in 2007 uh, famously led Japan to their upset victory over the box in 2015 and um, yeah turned England around after that disappointing home World Cup so Apart from a bit of a blip in the Six Nations this year, seems to be on a pretty good course with his uh, with his coaching, definitely at a higher level than his playing. Uh, going on, Gregor Townsend. Now again, Scottish fans will have to tell me what he's kind of how he's regarded in in Scotland uh, as a player because 82 caps is a is a ton of caps. So I would assume he's regarded as one of the best players Scotland has produced, but. You guys can kind of let me know how, how that is regarded in Scotland. Um, coached Glasgow. I believe they won the Pro, Pro 12 when he was in charge. Um, so for the most part, pretty successful. And he's been doing a pretty solid shift with uh, with Scotland. So him, I'll, I'll leave it up to the Scots to tell me which, which he's been more successful at so far. Because on paper, look pretty similar. But I guess uh, maybe he needs to win trophies with Scotland before we can kind of judge him so much on his coaching i guess we'll see uh michael checker i couldn't leave without mentioning michael checker again playing career played with uh, played with randwick uh, in the in the shoot shield competition so won that a lot played for australia under 21s but never played for the wallabies uh he went back to coach randwick won the shoot shield with them coached leinster uh successfully coached stud francais perhaps not so successfully the Waratahs, he won Super Rugby for the first time with them. The Wallabies got them to a World Cup final. It's kind of all gone to custard this year. Uh, but definitely his coaching career outweighs his um, his playing one. I'm almost done. Uh, I want to mention Johan Ackerman. He's got 12 Springbok caps. So again, I'll leave it to box fans to tell me how he was regarded as a player. But I think his coaching career is going on pretty well. It's still kind of early days, but he's definitely turned around the Lions and super rugby competition from being perennial kind of wooden spoon area to um, perennial contenders and uh, he seems to be doing a pretty solid job at Gloucester as well so all of these guys I've mentioned are pretty successful coaches and I think you would have to say looking at all those guys the majority of them have not had fantastic playing careers and I would kind of argue that, I mean, Ledesma is obviously an exception. Some of these guys played for their national team, so a pretty high level. But I'd kind of argue that, I don't know if any of you have, have ever been really good at something, and I'm not a very talented guy at a lot of stuff, but I, I just remember playing video games and then trying to teach someone how to play that video game. When you're just good at it, you just pick up the controller and you do it. And you're trying to tell someone who doesn't do it how to do it, and they're struggling and it's annoying. I kind of feel like that same logic applies for the top, top players. If you're a top, top player, as a coach, it's perhaps hard to see the things that you just did naturally. But if you're that player who's maybe a step below the top players, you can see what those guys are doing. And maybe you have to use your brain a bit more to, to figure out how things should be going 
even if you can't do it yourself when you're a player, maybe you're able to, to spot things or instruct things. And that education thing uh, seems to be very helpful in, in getting structure and that transferring of knowledge. So from the look at these guys, that's kind of my, um, my take on things that you definitely don't need to be a top player to be a top coach. In fact, a lot of the guys who are top coaches were not top players. And I'll just give a few examples of guys who perhaps were great players but didn't quite work out with the coaching. John Kerwin. Uh, I think it's pretty safe to assume he's an All Blacks legend. Uh, I mean, 63 caps, but back in the days when he was playing, uh, you know, they didn't play as often as they do now. Uh, coached Italy, coached Japan, and coached the Blues. None of them really anything to write home about. And he's pretty much put up the white flag with the coaching career and is now just working as a pundit. So, yeah, definitely a guy who, despite all his bluster in the changing rooms, wasn't able to to get guys playing in any way that was very successful. Uh, Tana Umanga, and again, it's another Blues guy that I'm mentioning. So it could just be that the Blues, as an organization in Super Rugby, are just poisoned. But uh, he's definitely an All Blacks legend, former All Blacks captain, 74 caps. Um... Yeah, didn't quite work out with his coaching career so much. I mean, too long he coached, I think, as a, as a kind of player coach, and it didn't didn't go that well. Surprisingly, as his first job, it was kind of, I think, um, trial by fire. Counties in the, in the, the Mitre 10 Cup, he was okay. And then when that Blues job came up, perhaps a year too early for him, he took it, and it was okay. And then it just kind of, again, turned to custard after some a little bit of promise early. So it didn't work out for him. Uh, another guy I've mentioned is uh, Martin Johnson, so not just sticking to the Blues. I think you'd have to say he's an England legend with like 300 plus caps for Leicester, 84 caps for England. He won the World Cup, British and Irish Lions captain. Like he did it all as a player. Uh, as a coach of England, he did win the Six Nations, but the 2011 World Cup didn't go very, very well and uh, finished with a winning percentage of 53%, which I think for England, probably not at that same level as his playing career. Uh, I have written down a few guys who it's kind of too early to say. Brad Thorne, a legend player, coaching the Reds in Super Rugby. He looks he looks like he's got potential, but it's still too early to say. Daryl Gibson uh, played 19 tests for the All Blacks. His coaching career started off pretty badly with the Waratahs, but he did manage to turn it around a bit last year. Uh, this next season will kind of be an interesting one to watch. Scott Robertson, uh, 20 odd caps for the All Blacks, so far from a, a legendary player, but a very good player. Uh, but his coaching career has just been, he's got the Midas touch, so we'll see if that continues. Uh, Robbie Fleck, 31 caps for the box. Seems at this point to perhaps be better than his coaching career. It's not been the best with the Stormers, but he's got another year, so we'll see how that goes. Again, there was a lot of names mentioned. Um, so for me, anyone else? Uh, for me, yeah, I would say you don't have to be a good player to be a good coach. In fact, in some and sometimes it's probably easier for for guys who weren't the very best to to pick up on things as a coach. Education background seems to help. Um, but yeah, some guys, the few ones, manage to do it both exceptionally well. Uh, but they do seem to be kind of few and far between you guys let me know your thoughts on on these guys that i've mentioned um some of the guys as i said you tell me how their their status in your countries compares to how you think they're going as a coach like player versus coach their reputation and other guys that i haven't mentioned as i said it's far from an exhaustive list i've just gone with guys that um i'm kind of semi-familiar with or familiar with and, and their careers and how i thought about them but um yeah you guys let me know your thoughts and i'll um talk to you again soon see you later